If you've had a Ring Doorbell Pro for a while, chances are you'll notice the button cracks over time due to the soft plastic material used. The good news is that it can be replaced, although it does carry a slightly in-depth process. Fear not though, follow this video and you'll have your button replaced in no time. You'll need to grab the ring screwdriver originally supplied with your ring doorbell for the first step, or a standard T6 bit, used to remove the single security screw in the bottom of the unit, taking care not to drop it if the doorbell is currently mounted outside. We can then proceed to remove the top cover. If mounted outside, proceed to unscrew the top and bottom screws to remove it from your door so you're left with the bare doorbell. Ok, so now we can get stuck in. Start by removing a screw from each corner of the unit, so four in total. Bearing in mind that you'll need a bit that's thin and slightly longer than usual to get into each recess. With these removed, use a spudger or a thin tool to remove the rear cover, which is held on with several clips along both sides. You'll find it easier to start at the bottom and work your way up both sides here. And after unclipping, you can gently remove the rear cover by pulling directly away from the main body. There are no cables or wires to worry about here, so pull straight off. You may find a rubber gasket comes away too, which isn't an issue. Place safely to one side. So, onto the guts of the doorbell. We need to pretty much remove all of this circuitry to get the screw that holds the button underneath. So begin by removing the two obvious black screws near the centre. followed by a single silver screw in the top right corner, and another in the bottom left corner. So at this point all we've done is remove the four screws that hold the main circuit in place. Next we'll move back up to the top right corner, and we need to release this small ribbon cable here. This links to the sensors just above the main camera unit. Use a spudger to pull the black tab gently upwards to release, and then pull the cable down and out of its socket. Now we'll move to the two connectors on the left side, one leads to a small backup battery and another to a capacitor, both of which sit under the circuit. Simply pull upwards to release both. Ok so with those up and moved to one side, we can pull up on the circuit board, very gently though, and we can finally see the rear screw holding the button in place, although it's still linked with a ribbon cable to the main board. For the moment though, move the circuit board up slightly to reveal a small battery next to the capacitor. This is stuck down with some adhesive, so using a spudger loosen the module. The adhesive isn't very strong, so it's rather easy to remove, but doing this allows some more movement inside for the next step. And that next step involves the ribbon cable, so just like with a top ribbon cable, lift the black clip to release, and the ribbon cable can be safely pulled out of its socket now providing enough space to get to that button screw. So that's the next step, remove the single screw holding the button in place, after which it can be pulled out from the front of the unit with the ribbon cable attached. On the underside you'll find a small spring which can be removed and placed safely to one side for now. Ok so now we can finally remove the button itself, which is held in place with some clips, You'll need to pretty much rip the old button apart to get it loose though, which isn't a problem considering it's damaged anyways. After which you can reach for your new replacement, I purchased this from eBay, or if you have your own 3D printer you could always print your own. Anyways notice the small notch on the side of the button holder here, this needs to line up with the notch in the new button. After which you'll need to apply some pressure until it snaps down into place. Right, so with the button replaced, we now need to reverse all our steps and get everything back together. Start by placing the small spring back into the rear of the button, after which we can carefully feed the button ribbon cable through the gap in the housing, seating the button back into place, and with that done, flip to the rear and push the button in so that it protrudes through the hole, enough to secure that single screw into the back. Take care not to over tighten this screw here, it needs to remain loose enough to allow button movement when it's pressed. So back off a little if need be, enough so that you have around this much movement when pressing the button. 
We now need to get that awkward ribbon cable back in place. I found it easier to use some tweezers here, so push back into its socket. And keeping it pressed with a finger, proceed to push down the black bar to lock the cable into place. Ok so at this stage you should be looking like this. Move the battery and capacitor cables to one side, and proceed to lower the main board back down into place. Not all the way just yet though, just enough so that we can connect the battery and capacitor cables back into their respective sockets. And before seating the board back down into position, make sure you move that final ribbon cable to one side as you lower the board since we need to reconnect it to the top side once the main board is in place. So with that out of the way, proceed to push the board back down and secure with the two black screws previously removed. Notice how I use a hand driver to insert all screws. You don't want to use an electric driver and strip out any plastic threads here, especially with these small screws. Next is that small silver screw, bottom left corner, and the same in the top right corner too. Leaving us with just that final ribbon cable that now has enough slack to seat and lock into place. Ok so at this point you should be looking like this, everything back in place and with a new front button. The final step is securing with the back panel. If your gasket came off while removing, now is the time to release it from the rear panel and place back into the groove around the mainboard, making sure it's seated properly down into place. After which the rear panel can be placed back down, firmly pressing down both sides to ensure it clips back into position. All that's left is to reinstall the four screws into each corner of the doorbell. Again, no need to over tighten here as you risk stripping threads. Just tighten enough to provide a snug fit. And that's it. All that's left is the final top cover and the security screw holding it in place. Although you probably want to mount the doorbell back into position first, but even so, that's the entire process complete. Give the button a couple of presses to ensure it feels normal providing a good tactile click each time. If you followed everything precisely, you should be able to apply power and after a few minutes while the doorbell re-establishes itself onto your network, you can test the button again while live, ensuring everything works as normal. Congratulations, you've just repaired your own doorbell button and saved the cost of an entire doorbell replacement.